Yesterday, we concluded our blog with a question. What comes to your mind as you face the trials, the tribulations, and the temptations in life? When you are tempted to do evil, when you are tempted to do maybe something you know you shouldn't do, but maybe it's not considered evil, what do you think? What comes to your mind? We talked how that these young men were strong here in 1 John chapter 2, 14, because the Word of God abided, was abiding in them, and they overcame the evil one. Twice in these verses here between 12 and 14, we read the words, they overcome the evil one. Now, in verse 15 is a verse that often comes to my mind when I'm thinking about going the wrong way when it comes to loving the world. Remember, we have these contrasts, love and hate, truth and the lie, obedience, disobedience in the book of 1 John, as these are tests and proofs of our fellowship, of our sonship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we read these words here that often come to my mind, that should come to your mind when you are tempted to do evil. He says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. Now, in the Bible, there's basically three uses of the word world the uses of the word world. The Bible says, for God so loved the world, the world. This is the world of mankind. God loves people. He loves every human being. Every human being is of great value to him. They're created in his image. But then also in the Bible, there's the world of nature, the world of nature. That's the, uh, we talk about Mother Earth. We talk about the trees and the flowers and the bees and things that are of the world. Those, that's the world of nature. Then there's also the world here in this passage that is our enemy. Just like we're to love God, we're to hate the world. Now, as we love God and truly the love of God is abiding in us, we will have a hatred for the system of the world. Now, what does it mean? Our world and the world that the Bible is speaking of here is that invisible enemy, that spiritual enemy, that spiritual system that's opposed to God and to Christ. You know, just like we have the world of sports, that's the organized system that's made up of a set of uh, people, it's made up of a set of different sports, it's made up of uh, things that uh, surround sports. That's the world of sports, and, and people live in those worlds, the worlds of sports. Well, there's the world, that system of evil that's organized under the evil one, Satan, to cause you and I to be led away from God, to disobey God, to do what we want to do rather than what God wants us to do. Now, in this passage of Scripture, we have four reasons at least why we should not love the world. We should not love the world. One is the world is our enemy. It's against us. It's, it's doing those things or having those things involved that would cause us to not love God like we should. You know, Jesus himself said, you cannot love God and mammon at the same time. You cannot serve two masters. Either you'll love the one and hate the other or hate the one and love the other. You can't serve the world and God at the same time. James tells us whoever is a friend of the world is the enemy of God in James chapter 4. So for what the world is, it's that system of evil organized under the evil one to cause you and I to disobey God. That's one reason we shouldn't love the world because of what it is. We shouldn't love the world because what the world does to us, what the world does to us, it leads us astray. It's the lust of the eyes. It's the lust of the flesh. It's the pride of life. It, it, it causes us to disobey God. It causes us to end up with nothing. Matter of fact, we should not love the world for what the Christian is, what the believer is, we read in these verses. We are children of God, fathers and children and little children and young men. We are in the family of God. Why would we love the enemy of God, the world? 
And then the last reason is because what the world does to us. The world, it says, is passing away and all the things in it are passing away. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. Oh, my friend today, I encourage you to let the Word of God abide in you. Be strong. Overcome not only the world, but come overcome the evil one who is leading you to follow the things that are in the world, not to love God like you should. Oh, today, may God help us to understand and apply these scriptures to our hearts and to our lives. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.